All right, before we jump on to page 19, just a little time out, and then we'll uh, practice slopes a little bit here. So from A to B, always think of it like this. You're going from the left of your paper to the right of your paper. So you're always starting over here and ending up over here. So my leftmost point is right here. To get to the other point, I have to go up one and over seven. So positive one, positive seven. So the slope is one seventh. This one, these aren't to be found anywhere. These are just random examples I'm introducing here a little bit. So to get from this side of the screen to that side of the screen, I'm gonna to have to go down first. So always go up or down first. And in this case, it's down. Down three, so negative three. And then over positive six. So the slope was down three over six but that can be reduced to negative one over two. So you wanna to try to reduce your slopes whenever you can. This one here, in order to get from this area to that area, I have to go up first. So up one, two, three, four, five, six, and then over one, two, three, four, five, six. So the slope there was positive six over six, and we just call that a big fat one. Now these two are special in case they ever come up. A horizontal line to get from here to here, I go up or down uh, zero, right? Because you don't go up or down at all. And then over one, two, three, four. But zero over anything is zero. If it's like this, a vertical segment or a vertical line, to get from A to B, I had to go down one, two, three, four, five, six, and then over none. You can't have zero on the bottom of a fraction. So in this case, the slope is called undefined. You probably remember that from back in the day. One way I was taught to remember that is that you, out of a uh, horizontal line, you can make the word zero, and out of a vertical line, you can make the word undefined. So you can make a Z and a U this way and this way. All right. So here is the how-to key for page 19. Now, if you realize what I did, I they're not just colored for the sake of being colored. Each one of those colors, they all share the same graph. So I'm gonna try the first one like this, and if it ends up being too confusing for you, we'll start from scratch on this one. But the orange questions here are the orange ones there. And then same thing would go for the green, would match up with these green and so on and so forth. So I got them started just to save us some time. So the square, it gives us three vertices, 0, 0, 4, 0, and 4, 4. And we're looking for the fourth one. So I plotted 0, 0, 4, 0, and 4, 4. So based on that, you can pretty much tell that the fourth point would have to be right there. And that point is 4, Four. Not too bad on that one, right? Nice straight vertical and horizontal square. B, the rectangle in green, three one, three negative seven, and negative one negative seven. So here is three negative one, here's three negative seven, here's negative one negative seven. So if you're trying to make a rectangle out of this, A, B, C, you can almost tell perfectly that it would go right there. 
So if that's point D, it would be negative 1, negative 1. The purple isosceles triangle. This is a little tricky. So here I have only two points given and we're looking for a third one. 8, negative 2 is right here. And the other one they gave me was 6, 5, which is right here. So if I have the beginnings of a triangle right here, but I want to make it isosceles, they did tell me that the y coordinate has to be 5. So that means that somewhere on this line right here, right, just like Dr. Conklin explained on the last page a little while ago, if it has to be up there, the only way to make an isosceles triangle would be, picture this for a minute, if that was the middle, then that would be the opposite side, because now it's isosceles. Now you have a perfectly isosceles triangle. So that would be your answer, which is 10, 5. Okay? The red one, parallelogram, 2, 6, negative 1, 8, and 3, 7. 2, 6, negative 1, 8, and 3, 7. So, so far, I'm going to connect A and B, and B and C. So now this, for the first time, isn't horizontal or vertical. It's a little bit crooked. So we have to use our slopes knowledge that we practiced here and even on the page before that. So there's a couple of ways you could do this. You know that to get from B down to A, you had to go down 2 and over 3. So if you do that same thing from C, not too different than when we used to use the compass to translate, right? If we went from here to here, we do the same thing from here. So over 2, I'm sorry, down 2 over 3. So that puts us right here. And if we were to connect that, we have a parallelogram. So that point is 0, 5. Okay. And let's try the yellow one. This is a 3, 4, 5 right triangle. They gave us negative 5, negative 4, and negative 5, negative 8. So they gave us those two yellow points there. Negative 5, negative 4, and negative 5, negative 8. And it says there's two different 3, 4, 5 right triangles. Let's see what they're talking about here. If that's one side, and I know that they want me to be at negative 8 on both choices, which is on this line here, okay? If this is, I'm going to change the color just so you can see it better. If this is 4, it wants me to go 3 this way or 3 this way because that would be 5. So there's two choices. It could be here or it could be here. And I would have a 3, 4, 5 triangle here or I would have a 3, 4, 5 right triangle here. So those two points right there and right there are negative 8, negative 8, and negative 2, negative 8. Okay, and the last one is another isosceles triangle uh, in light blue. You can see the light blue right here. Somehow these didn't overlap each other, but they came close. Negative 2, negative 1, and negative 6, negative 2. And it wants me to be on x, negative 2. So that means the x coordinate has to be negative 2. So it's somewhere along here. And wants an isosceles triangle. So if I do that, that would make it isosceles. And I have a little isosceles triangle right here, which makes that point negative 2, negative 3. So this is actually the beginning of coordinate proofs and past reasons exams. You're not getting at whether we're going to have one or when it will be or how much it will count, but in past exams, 
this was the beginning of a coordinate proof problem. A lot of times was to find the fourth point of a quadrilateral or maybe even the third point of a certain triangle. All right, video there. I want you to try, if you haven't already, you may have already done this, try these. I won't walk through them. I'll just post the key in a minute at the end of this video. And then make sure you take the Google Forms quiz. There it is right there. There's our Google Forms quiz. So it's like a March 30, 31 checkpoint, which is like Monday, Tuesday's topic here. So if you look on Google Forms or on Google Classroom where this form is, you will see this one question which comes off of, you can see here, it comes off of page 20 in your packets, letter H, and then all you have to do is type the answer down there at the bottom, and we will know whether you are doing well or need a little bit more help on this. And there's actually uh, another question at the bottom that says if there's any concerns, let us know. So make sure you do this after you try pages 19 or 18 and 19. We will see you Tuesday for a live session. But I'll post the key to this in just a few seconds. Letter A. To get from B to C, I went down 4 over 2. So I'm going to go down 4 over 2 from A. And that's going to be my point D. There's my rhombus. Question B. That's the three points they give you for what they call a rectangle. So if I needed to get from, let's say, B to A, I went to the left 2 and up 1. So what if I did that again? Left 2 and up 1. That would be my point D. And now I have a rectangle. Now if you look up here, you have the two points they gave me for my isosceles triangle, which was negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, negative eight, but I put a dotted line here because it makes me be on that line. So in order to make an isosceles triangle, if that was the middle right here, then I would just go for the other way. And now I have an isosceles triangle. So you just made a mirror image of it and it's at negative three zero. And on the red parallelogram, those are the three points that they give you up there. So if I had, I'm looking for a point probably over here somewhere, right? So if I wanted, so I wanted to get from B up to A, I would go backwards, whoops, backwards two, up one. So if I do the same thing here, backwards two, up one, I end up right here. And now I have a parallelogram with point D being three, negative one. If I wanted a five, 12, 13 right triangle, only giving you these two points, and it told me I had to use nine as one of my y coordinates. So this is 12, so the other one has to be five, but it could be five this way, or five this way. So both of those points would work. You could have this triangle or this triangle. So the two answers are this and this. Letter F, let's do this to it. I don't like it. Don't worry about letter F. And I do want you to try to finish these at the bottom, A, B, C, and D. And then don't forget to hit up Google Forms, which is on Google Classroom, and let us know that you're doing all right by performing this question. And there's a second question underneath that and submitting it right away. Thanks a lot. See you Tuesday on the live session.